I don't, you know what, I don't, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, I could not explain why that strikes a particular strong chord in people's hearts who can see us. Um, it's very anthemic, so, uh, it's got a very anthemic um, finale, so I mean, that could be it, uh, I suppose. Um, and it began, it began its, it, its evolution was in something quite mundane, because I was interested in um, the immortality of cinema initially. Um, so the first kind of like demo versions of it were about how it, you know, a person is captured at the, at the peak of beauty, right? And, um, and there it is, you know, for as long as you preserve that in film, there they are, you know, there's an aspect of themselves preserved, whether you're talking about a movie or whether you're talking about an Elvis Presley performance or whatever it is you're talking about. Um, but then I read a book called Life After Life. Uh, I can't remember, even remember the author now. It was one of the first popular studies done on the uh, near-death experience and the, and the theme of the song shifted accordingly. So it came, it came out of that. And I can remember the night that I actually wrote the lyric. Uh, yeah, I was, I, I was home alone and I went out for a walk um, and it started, to, it, it started to bucket with rain. And I dived into uh, a doorway of a church to shelter from, from the rain. The rain was absolutely lashing it down. And it didn't stop. And I, had, I only had like a light jacket on. And I kind of went, told him for the rain and I always carried a notebook with me so I started writing while I was waiting for the rain to stop and I liked the ambient sound of the rain so much I thought oh, I'll, I'll do some writing and I wrote uh, the uh, first couple of stanzas in um, then and then, we, and then when it came to the ending um, we, you know we kind of jammed that out we didn't really have one um, you know, because the initial idea started with something that Reg did. It's the first thing that me and Reg ever did. He brought me this riff and said, what would you do with this? And I laid the bass down in the line over his, over his riff that he was doing. And he was just like, he, he was stunned. He said, oh, that's, that's wonderful. So we went with that. And we didn't have an ending. We just jammed the ending out. Um, and the whole end part of it, I improvised it. I improvised it. Um, and I'd kind of improvise something and then I'd, and then we'd, I'd go into the mixing room uh, to the console and play it back and listen to it. And it's kind of like doing a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, you know, um, in terms of like what came in and where. And then I'd go back in and say, oh, I want to do something else and do the knocking on the door bit and then come back out. And then there was a, a point where it was just felt finished.